Welcome back to the stage show. I'm very excited because we are now going to be seeing Dead Island, of course. Um, now, we've, we've seen that very exciting trailer um, that you showed not so long ago. Um, and it got everybody hyped about a game that maybe they hadn't been taking a look at. What was the, the reaction like? And were you excited about what people were talking about once the trailer was released? So definitely we were excited about what's happening with the trailer. So we put it out there and we got this amazing feedback. People were talking about it. We are discussing it on the internet. Got this massive hype behind it and we were like super excited about the stuff happening. But I mean of course then building up from a trailer into the real game, this is always like a huge step. We are really, really proud about how the people like the game right now. They have been playing it all over here at the E3 and they all love it. They all have had great reviews and they're previous about it. And so we're really, really massively hyped about what is happening here right now. Now, obviously, I was excited about the trailer because I forgot to introduce you, Vincent. You're, uh, you're a brand manager with, uh, with Deep Silver. Yes. And uh, we're going to be seeing, are we seeing something new today that we haven't seen yet for, uh, for Dead for Island? Uh, we are seeing today um, uh, the character Logan. We're going to play a couple of uh, minutes with him. Going to go into the city, going to take a mission there. So the whole thing on the island begins on the beach and on the hotel. And now we're moving forward in the story. We're in like six to eight hours into the story itself. And now we are in the city, the capital of Banoi, the island the game is playing on, called Morrisby. And we are trying to help a couple of people, getting some quests done and stuff like that. And then we're going to move forward in the storyline. Great. Well, why don't, we, why don't we jump in, take a look and see what's happening on screen and uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the setup. Where, where are we? Why are we here? And what makes this zombie game so different from other ones? So uh, the setup itself is that our character, we have one of four different characters to choose from. We get onto the island. We don't know what is happening. We just are there for holidays or other reasons. And suddenly, in the night, zombies attack the hotel we're staying in. And so we get out of the hotel somehow, survive this whole thing, and then are just like caught on the island, trying to survive, trying to get out of there somehow. But we find out that we are somehow immune to being turned into a zombie. So we also try to help the other persons on the island, the other survivors, and try to make their life a little bit easier. And in the end, it's going to be, it's a story-based game. We're going to try to get off the island. We're going to try to help the other survivors. But at the same time, we're exploring the island, finding out more about the zombie outbreak, and trying to help the other people. So in this case right now, we are, we started the game in the church of Morrisby. The church has been attacked by zombies, and we just cleaned that place from zombies, and by that, kept made it a new safe hub. And so the people in the church now are giving us new quests. They sell stuff to us. We can get more into their storylines. And we took a side mission right now of one particular guy. He has lost his family at a, at a zombie attack. And by lost, I mean he doesn't know where they are, if they're still alive. So he asked us to put posters up in the city of Morrisby. So we go there. We are going to hang up posters all over the city. And we are just going to wander around here right now and uh, try to help this particular guy. Now so, we've seen a, a couple of uh, a couple of zombies here. Michael in Northern Ireland is curious about bosses. Are there going to be larger enemies that we're going to face as we uh, continue through the island? We're going to while we wander over the island. We're going to be bumping into bigger zombies and different kinds kind of zombies, like the ram zombie or like the florist zombie. So there's going to be different kinds of zombies that attack on a on a certain that need different strategies to fight against those. So. Pretty much you have like slow, normal John Romero zombies, you have like 28 days later zombies that attack you, but also the zombies attacking from a distance and zombies that need particular strategies. And so when you play in, in multiplayer and co-op, you're going to be working together. So one guy is the bait, the other ones keep attacking the zombies and stuff like that happening. So it's going to be, depending how you explore, you're going to run in those zombies. Now Chris Reeves um, in Tennessee wondering about, we see you gaining experience here. Um, what is the experience used for, and uh, how do you pr how does that uh, come into play in terms of progressing through the game? So uh, you start the game as a normal visitor on the island, and you don't know nothing about killing zombies. So you just pick up whatever you can to defend yourself. But then progressing through the story, progressing through the game, you are going to gain levels. And every character has unique abilities, unique skills, active and passive skills. So we have four different characters that stand for four different character classes. And every class, like one class is really good with blunt weapons, another class is really good throwing weapons, and then you have uh, rage skills on top of that. So you level up, you get skill points, you put those skill points into your skill trees, and at the same time you gain HP, you gain stamina, you gain speed. So you are progressing and getting better and better at defending yourself. Um, now I'm curious to see too, I saw a, a bar on the screen, I think that's the stamina bar. And uh, I see that every time you, you landed an attack, um, that bar actually went down. 
Um, how how does the stamina bar affect how you would play Dead Island? Uh, it is really important because we don't want you to just run into a fight slicing all the time, but you have to be careful what you do. So if you get into a fight with five zombies and just slice and slice and your stamina bar is completely empty, you will be left defenseless. You cannot defend yourself anymore, you cannot run away because you don't have the stamina. So you're pretty much true when it comes to that point. So go in there and make every hit count because your stamina bar is really, really uh, empty at once in the beginning of the game. You just have like five to six hits and then you're done with it. So make every hit count, be careful that you're not surrounded by zombies, be careful which weapon you use because also which weapon you use is important for how much stamina is drawn out of your bar and be careful that your character is at the level you need to fight a particular group of zombies because if you're like level 5 and the zombies you're attacking at level 20, your stamina bar is not going to be enough, your damage is not going to be enough. Now Juni in the Philippines, curious about weapons, we saw you uh, open a crate earlier or something along that lines that had a weapon in it that you can pick up and start using. Will you earn new weapons for the game and is there any way to customize weapons once you uh, have a favorite for example? Uh, yeah, you pick up weapons, you pick up the weapons uh, by going over the island, exploring the island and picking up the items and weapons and crates and in suitcases and whatever. But also we have workbenches in the game. So you can find blueprints, you can find items and when you have the weapon and the item that you need in combination with a blueprint, you can craft new weapons. But also we have a weapon decay system in the game, so if you use a weapon a lot of times you will have it being destroyed after a couple of minutes. So you have like 15 to 20 slices with the weapon and then this white bar you can see up there in the right upper corner of the screen is emptying it itself and when it's completely empty the weapon is destroyed. So you need to get to a workbench and repair the weapon. But also we have an upgrading function in the game, so when the weapon is repaired you can upgrade it to do more damage, to do more force, to get to a higher durability basically. Now, Chris in Australia curious about the structure of the game. Um, we've seen you know, open world type games, he's wondering is this an open world, is this more mission based where you unlock new areas as you progress, how would you describe the structure? So the structure is we have an open world game, but the open world is going to be divided into areas. So in the beginning of the game you're not going to have access to the full island, but just of a part of the island. So you're going to go and have a main quest, a, a story tree to say so, where you have main story quests that you have to fulfill. But also there's going to be side quests, because you're going to be wandering around the island, meeting other survivors, getting their mission, trying to bring them to safety. So you have the main, skill, the main quest tree and you have side quests on the side. And so progressing through the game, you're going to unlock more and more areas. And then via fast travel or taking a car, you can take a, use cars in the game. Or just by walking, you can go back to the places you've already been at and then try to explore them some more to get collectibles and other things. Now we've seen single player here. A lot of people wondering, including Luke and Wales, is there going to be co-op play and is that going to differ from the single player? So we're seeing single player here. The whole game is story based. So pretty much you can, it's seamless drop-in, drop-out multiplayer co-op for up to four players. So to say so, you play the game in single player for a couple of hours and you see a friend goes online. You invite him into your game, he is going to join and drop into your game, play through the story together with you and then drop out again, you continue in single player. So this is for up to four players and you can experience the whole game together. Now, I see this really large dude here. Who, what is this and uh, how... How would you go about taking down a, a guy this big? So that is the Ram Zombie. He's really a crazy, crazy zombie. He, cannot, he will not take any damage from up front, so you need to dodge his attacks and go behind him and attack him from the back because this is the only way you're going to do some really damage to him. But the thing also is he's normally surrounded by other zombies. And if that zombie is going to be a pain of the ass because they can actually grab you. And if they grab you and then the Ram hits you, exactly this is what happens. He knocks you down to the ground and then you're going to be out there for like five seconds, have to stand up again, lose a lot of energy. So this is really a tough, tough opponent. So when you play in multiplayer, that's what's called the best part. One of the guys is going to be like the bait and the other guys are going to be attacking him from the back. And it seems like you can actually use him to your advantage because he's plowing over other zombies as he charges. Exactly. He has no friends, no enemies. He just doesn't care. He wants to ram down everything that is in his way. A couple of people wondering, Amr Mosin in Cairo is one of them, can you use the environment against zombies? Is there any way where I can pick things up and throw them or can I shoot something and have it topple down? Yeah, we have stuff like propane tanks out there you can carry with you, you can throw it into a group of zombies and make it explode. We have a certain type of zombie that is the suicider zombie. 
that zombie is actually, when you throw a weapon into him, he's going to explode and take the whole group of zombies around him down with him. So there is a way to interact with the surroundings. And also, of course, as I said, you can drive around with cars. If you, if you, go, you can, well, anyway, be able to actually build new weapons that also will explode and do new kinds of damage later on. Now we've moved on to a, a different character here. No, it's right? still the same oh, character, the same but character. it's a new okay. surrounding. That's the thing. We have this indoor levels, we have the outdoor levels. So pretty much here, we just went down into the sewers. So you have the whole city to explore as an open world environment, but you don't need to be on ground level. You can go down into the sewers, you can climb up onto the roof and explore the city from different angles there. Now I'm just curious for myself. Let's say I finished the campaign. Um, but I had so much fun that I just want to go in and kill a bunch of stuff. When I finish, am I going to be able to go back in and just play around on the island to my heart's content? Yeah, you will be able. You can take a new character when you go through that and then just jump into a chapter you already finished and then start from that chapter, get your skill points attached there and play with the, new, with the other character. Or you take the character you've used and go back there and just kill a couple of zombies. That is going to be the fun part, yeah. Okay, now what did we see just here? I saw the enemies, I see the enemies glowing red here. Um, what is this a special skill and yeah. are there other kinds of special skills that are similar to this one? Every character has a unique special skill. So in this case we are playing with Logan and he his rage mode is pretty much he goes into fury and he will throw knives towards the enemies and he does a lot of damage in that time frame. But it's only like five to ten seconds you have that skill and afterwards the, the bar is going to be completely empty and you have to fill it up again by killing zombies. This is now also a new kind of zombie, this was the, the floater. He attacks you from a distance, so this is actually another type of zombie you will use different strategies for. So you have the rage bar, every character has different rage skills. The asset, one character depends on speed, the other one is more brute force. This guy is more about throwing, so everyone has different unique skills. Now Chris in Connecticut curious about the size of the island. How big would you say the island is in comparison with, say, Grand Theft Auto, or how many, how many virtual miles or kilometers would you suggest? Oh, that's, that's tough to say. I can tell you it's a huge island. Like in the beginning, you're just going to be at the beach part with the hotel and the, and the, the pool area and everything. But you're going to be indoors and outdoors. It's a huge part, like getting from one side of the, of the beach to the other one is going to take about like 15 to 20 minutes by itself. And then you jump into the new areas, like the jungle, what is huge again. You jump into the city, what is also huge again, and at different parts there. But all in all, it's just a huge gaming experience. A lot of stuff you can see and find out about. Great. Vincent, Dead Island, when is this going to be on store shelves and what platforms will we see it on? Dead Island is going to be out really soon. It's the 6th of September and it's going to be out there on, on Xbox 360, on PS3 and on PC. That's fantastic news. Thanks so much for stopping by and showing off the game. I think we're going to head out and see that more insanity on the show floor. Maybe check in with Nyko? I don't know. Let's find out together. <laughs>